Last time we looked at the Paladin Woe 4 back in March of 2024. It featured a U-series processor, and overall it was a pretty good mini PC, coming in at a nice price. This time it features an H-series CPU, and that comes with a power and performance increase, and of course, more heat to deal with. Does it impress, or fall flat? Well, judging by the title of the video, you already know the answer. Damn, gotta fire that guy. Paladin's Woe 4 has a very distinct look to it. It gives me 80s appliance style vibes. Radical. The coat of paint has changed from blue to black this time around, which I think looks nicer, but it's still the same plastic box as before, with decent build quality. Although there's a blemish with this unit this time around, we'll go into shortly. The Woe 4 features AMD's Ryzen 5600H, an aging mid-range mobile CPU from a number of years back that still has decent CPU and graphics performance by today's standards. A major factor that sets the Woe 4 apart is price, and this one's a banger. Peloton provided me with a coupon, bringing it down to just 210 US dollars on Amazon.com. That means it falls into my 250 US dollars and under budget mini PC list, and the results aren't pretty. For the competition, which is made up mostly of Intel's N-series CPUs. Yep, this is going to be pretty one-sided. Included in the box for the dollars is a 19 volt 90 watt power brick, VesaMount, 2.5 inch SATA ribbon, and a HDMI cable. Ports include dual USB type A 10 gigabit and a type C 10 gigabit data port supporting display out. Unfortunately, it doesn't support power delivery and can't be powered with a USB-C monitor. Finally, we have a 3.5mm audio jack. The back has dual USB 2, DisplayPort, HDMI, Realtek Gigabit LAN, and to the right of it, Realtek 2.5 Gigabit. Peldon has thrown in a Realtek Wi-Fi 6 chip for wireless and Bluetooth. Recently on this channel, we started the Make Minis Easy to Open Again movement also known as Mitoa, and the Peladon Wo4 follows the doctrine by being one of the easiest minis to open on the market, full stop. Lift the top magnetic lid for access to the RAM and SSD and that's it. I know, shocking right? No rubber feet, screws, plates, or whatever else. Only one problem though, the magnets glued to the lid came off and now it's all impotent and useless like my As you can see here, Last year's Woe 4 unit held up better. Anyway, I'm gonna have to super glue these suckers back on. The 2.5 inch SATA drive can be attached to the lid for storage expansion, while the 2280 M.2 NVMe slot is Gen 3 X4. Peldon has once again included just one 16GB stick of DDR4-3200 RAM, which as always means I'll have to test with a second stick to show the difference in performance. Included with this mini is Windows 11 Pro, it's scanned free of malware. Ubuntu works just fine, tested with the latest version. Since there are at least two possible performance profiles in the BIOS, as well as a single and dual RAM stick configuration, I'll be limiting tests to just two profiles. The balance result will be out of the box performance, while the performance result will be with two sticks of RAM and the highest power limit enabled, which is 54 watts for this CPU. Okay, starting with single core Cinebench, and the new Woe 4 is the king of the minis under 250 US dollars, easily taking top spot. Multi core performance out of the box is huge compared to most of the other minis, with more than double the score. In performance mode, it hits more than triple Intel's N series. Geekbench single core CPU is up next, and it's another massive win. And it's no surprise we see the same in multi core. The H.264 CPU video encoding test takes less than half of the time of the best Intel result, and even less time with the performance mode together with dual channel memory. Now taking that same video file and using the hardware encoder on the GPU, and it's another big win for the 5600H. You'll also see huge gains over Intel's N series in graphics performance, especially if you add a second RAM stick. You can see in Steel Nomad Lite that the 5600H is almost exactly three times the score compared to the next best Intel N series. There are big gains to be had in graphics performance with two sticks of RAM according to the benchmarks, 
and that's even the case with the default power limit. I want to show an example of that. So let's start with an eSports title, Valorant. Even with the out of the box power limit, there's a huge improvement in frame rate just by adding another 16 gigabyte DDR4 3200 stick. One more example, here's Forza Horizon 5 with a 46% improvement. The Ryzen 5600H makes for a decent emulation box capable of handling most Wii U games and some PS3 at 1080p resolution. A benchmark I'm adding to the budget line is the time it takes to compile the Linux kernel for those looking to use the mini PC for coding purposes. Since I don't have any entries yet, I've taken the chart from the minis above 250 US dollars. The 5600H holds up pretty well against the pricier and much pricier options nearing 1000 US dollars. Another benchmark being added is Adobe Photoshop, which this mini can handle no problem. For Adobe Premiere, it really needs a second stick of RAM when running projects with resolutions above 1080p. Either way, 4K editing won't be a great experience, even if it's doable. Now we're back to the budget minis with a 3 d Mark storage benchmark. The Peloton easily takes first place thanks to it having full Gen 3 X4 bandwidth. And with the included heatsink, the SSD temp is kept under control. Bluetooth range is excellent with this mini PC, taking the top spot for a budget unit with no external antennas. Wireless range is also good with no issues at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. Moving on to the power results. Idle power draw is pretty ordinary at 10 watts and the maximum is huge compared to Intel's N series, which is where a lot of the performance comes from. Using the 54 watt power limit draws a lot more power once again. In fact, it's almost three times the N series. But even with this high power draw, the Peloton's CPU temp stayed low, only getting close to 90C while using the performance mode. I wasn't expecting too much in regards to fan noise with the CPU wattage and price, but it's actually pretty good out of the box, coming in at 37 dBA under load. Performance mode ups fan noise a lot and is too high for my liking. I'd stick to the out of box experience, just with an extra stick of RAM. No surprise that a mini PC with more heat to deal with is going to need a bigger core, and so the mini PC size goes up. This is one of the biggest budget minis we've looked at, but nothing strange for the wattage. Mashing the delete key on startup lets you access the BIOS. Advanced, wake on LAN and AC power loss options are near the top. If we go to AMD, CBS, NBIO common options, you'll find GFX configuration, which allows you to allocate the amount of VRAM for the iGPU. In SMU common options, you'll find a fan control setting, and you can set the power limit in system configuration. Peloton's WO4 really is the budget performance king if that's what you're looking for. The price of the WO4 is very attractive for 210 US dollars and its performance is unmatched compared to all the minis we've looked at. It has good cooling. Bluetooth and wireless range is excellent. I also like how easy it is to open with its magnetic lid, but my unit shouldn't have passed QC with the glue already having let go on all the magnets. My biggest issue with this mini is that it comes with just one stick of RAM. You're leaving a lot of performance on the table, especially on the iGPU side, and I would have liked to see a 2x8GB option for those that don't want to buy and install a second RAM stick themselves. Also, including USB-C PD would have rounded off a nice package, but at least it has display out. Apart from that, there's little to complain about for the price. If I was looking for the best performing mini PC under 250 US dollars and wanted something that doesn't make major compromises with cooling or fan noise, 
then I guess I'd get this. And that, my friends, is the second recommendation this month after a long dry spell. Find the link and coupon in the video description. That being said, maybe performance isn't that important and you just want something that's even cheaper with very low fan noise and power draw. In that case, check out the Paladin Y6 review, which you can find right here. Cheers!